So actually we talked about SDN already to a degree, so I, can, I think I can skip a little bit of the intro slides here. So the point that we were trying to make, obviously there's a change in paradigm on how networks are managed and operated away from a pretty static infrastructure where changes were hard to introduce and uh, into a more dynamic uh, environment where new services can be deployed quickly. The entire network is a single pool of resources that you can allocate and it it uses centralized management and automation techniques uh, to become more modern, more efficient, and more flexible and more agile. And obviously SDN is set out uh, to be a technology that helps to achieve those goals. And looking back, what happened at, at the mainframe level where you had a really mo mono monolithic uh, architecture that was decomposed over time <coughs> to the hardware itself, the operating system, and the application similarly uh, uh, what happened there will happen to the network over time uh, as uh, SDN technologies get, get introduced and more and more used. Yeah? Uh, traditionally, also important to know, the traditional network is a distributed architecture. You have a distributed con control plane function, typically running uh, routing protocols uh, and protocols li like spanning tree. Um, uh, forwarding is packet by packet, so there's no real notion of a flow, which is really important in our world as we think uh, policies can be better applied to application flows it be can become more granular from a control perspective so, um, quick interruption here yes so how do you reconcile as we talk about sdn at this level how do you reconcile the uh, openness the promise of openness with sdn without losing control over your architecture yeah the mixing and matching the white box yes Promise. Actually, we are getting to that point at the end of the presentation <laughs> because we wanted just to define how we see SDN. Uh, but overall, we did a few weeks ago an SDN architecture launch that specifically addresses those concerns as of, and I just preempt my last presentation. So in, in essence, what, what we think is happening and, and what we are driving towards is an SDN platform that is not only open, but also standards-based and multi-vendor-led. So the problem at, at this point in time is in the industry, uh, you get very narrow SDN architectures that are open in terms of those vendors opening up their APIs for mm -hmm. programmability, but it's really specific to that uh, platform. So you as an application developer, you trying to bring up something innovative on top of that platform, you are stuck with that platform. Your application is not portable. So it's not really standards-based. Even the whole talks around OpenFlow on the Southbound side might help uh, to a degree to talk about standardization, but that's just one component of an overall SDN solution. An SDN solution really consists of the network element itself, the protocol configuring that network element, the control entity, as well as the application sitting on, to on top of that control entity. And if that control entity is not an entity that embraces a, a multi-vendor and open and standards-based approach, you, didn't, you really missed the mark because you still have a vendor-specific solution. And we think our architecture that we launched a few weeks ago, which we'll talk about at the end of that presentation, uh, can overcome that problem by using and leveraging uh, new uh, technologies that have already mined share in the market like Open Daylight, which exposes a set of northbound APIs that as multiple vendors use those northbound APIs, applications that are developed on top of that become programmable, uh, become portable between different vendor solutions. And then you are really at, at the final goal where both on the northbound and the southbound side, you have the ability to mix and match different vendors together. So, so that sounds like a wonderful panacea of everybody gets along and they hold hands and they skip down the road and everybody's happy, yes, right? Yes, that's the well, ultimate goal, yeah. Well, well how far that. down into the, into the 811 protocol do you envision that sharing happening, right? Do you, do you someday see, uh, you know, <clears throat> two different vendors, uh, a client being able to do an 811R fast secure roam from vendor A to vendor B because everything's been SDN enabled and we've got this great panacea of sharing information and you've got this great interoperability, right? I mean, is it, you know, at, at what point do you, is, is it simply not going to happen, right? So, so that will take a while. So let's face it as well. And, and that's the point that we are uh, trying to make here as well is so far as the SDN 
discussion in the market has been very data center centric. So not a lot of people spend a, spend a lot of time of thinking about those kind of problems. And specifically on the wireless side, we do see that centralization is absolutely necessary to manage the complexity of the wireless infrastructure um, and provide a central provisioning uh, component. But no one so far really thought about what that means in terms of rate of change that you need to manage. You have many more sessions to manage. You have many more events that are taking place. Roaming takes place as you're going five gigahertz. Cell sizes get smaller. You get more network elements and you get even more roaming events. And so far the SDN community hasn't been focused on that. And our goal is as part of that standardization effort that is ongoing, we want to be a, a contributor and a driver towards a solution that is really workable and scales and makes sense and allows those ultimately uh, those capabilities to so take place. Again, it still sounds like a solution waiting for a problem. I mean, there's there there's a lot of this great panacea stuff, and yep. and then we say, hey, w you know, what about great intervendor operability? That sounds like a cool thing to accomplish. Uh, you know, from a lofty goals perspective, you've got a lofty solution. Let's address a lofty goal. And uh, you know, we really haven't quite talked about that yet. You know? Yeah, we are getting there. So Dion's uh, session will specifically talk about that, but we are still in an early phase. So. The goal is set, the vision is set, it will take a few years to get there. I think, I think like, like Marcus is saying, what's, what's interesting to, from our perspective, so I think that we're probably one of the few, if not the only company thinking about wireless and its perspective from SDN, because like Marcus said, SDN today is very much data center and sure, vMotion moves stuff around the data center, but mobility and what happens, you know, users moving around an environment, if you're programming a network and trying to set up flow between two users, which all of a sudden, they're not both on the same AP, they're on different APs and hey, they're still moving and you're trying to coordinate the infrastructure to actually set up a unique path between them for whatever application they're using. That's very much top of mind for us. So that's where we think SDN comes out of the data center and, and where it needs to come together. So I think one aspect of vendor interoperability is perhaps one idea or concept out there, but I think there's some really cool and interesting things just in terms of being able to program the network. Maybe it's from one vendor um, that is part of the conversation, I think, as well. There's just so many things to open our minds. I think it's just interesting that not so many vendors are thinking about Wi-Fi and the mobility of what's happening because it's a pretty complex problem to solve. Uh, obviously, the problem's not yep. solved yet in the data yep. center, right? Yep. It will help me understand because I'm not a networking SDN guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you kind of cannibalize your, your product, right? Because right now you have a hold on your customer because you know, you're selling them your switches and your solution. When you go into this open architecture, where do you guys make your money now? Is it all in licensing? Is yeah. it in – help, help me understand that. So – First and they foremost, want the last presentation so first. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll, we'll actually, we will skip the last presentation. Yeah. Maybe. So first we'll and see foremost, the, is. <laughs> the entire market is not really going all white box, for example. So that was one of the initial discussions that we had, like 2008, when the ONF came up with OpenFlow, and the whole market will be just white, and that's it. So we don't see that. So that's one component to it. So. Not in the foreseeable future, maybe in five to ten years from now, but not between one and five years uh, at, at this point in time. So there will be a mixture of places where you still sell your own infrastructure, but you sell it in a, in a different way. And, and on top of that, obviously, uh, we, we will see a shift more towards software sale and service sale associated with those software sale over time. But it doesn't happen overnight and it, it will be a journey and not sure. you're not flipping But I think if, if you look, so, so I mean, there's a few for things. For sure the organization itself will transition as well from a pure infrastructure sale into a mixed infrastructure, service, software and application sale. And, and we're seeing that already as part of our uh, wireless uh, sales today that wireless is one component to it, but all of those software components that I showed you uh, surrounding that solution, they become more and more important and they also become a decision factor on, on why customers choose our solution. It's not wireless by itself, it's the entire solution that already makes a difference even today. And that trend uh, will accelerate and, and will solidify itself over time. Marcus, I've got a couple of questions. Yes. 
So <laughs> it sounds to me like you're saying that in order to get all of the instruction sets to play nice with each other, we kind of need to converge on a single controller architecture. And, and we all know that Neela would love it if everybody converged on ODL. Um, we don't need to converge on a single controller architecture, but we need to converge on a single set of, of APIs that allow you to provision those controllers. So that then would raise the question, if we all have to converge on a single set of APIs, and if all of those APIs case, are yeah. supported by ODL or yeah. whoever it is, why are you coming up with your own controller again? Better service, better capabilities in the controller itself, better scale, for example. And those codes can't be checked back into ODL? And I know that if they Brent Salisbury is listening right now, he's probably jumping yeah. up and down. Yeah. <laughs> Certain things will be checked back for, for sure, especially on the North and Southbound API side. But there will be also applications that will be part of our controller that will make our control capability unique, obviously. And it also sounds like you guys are not high on using OpenFlow to do the... It can be a component, so obviously it's a, it's a critical component for certain deployments today, for example, in the data center, but the question becomes whether that's applicable across the entire infrastructure. So we are not tied to one protocol. We do expect that there will be a mixture of different thousand-pound protocols being used, one of OpenFlow being one of them. So my guess is you guys are going to have some kind of proprietary fib table programming protocol running off of your controller to solve the scalability issue of turning the, the OpenFlow fire hose on to Yeah, so device. that's, for example, one of the problems that we are, that we are still looking at right now. Yeah. So it all depends on the point of abstraction. Yeah. So SDN is defined, we're talking about openness of SDN, but we have to talk on which point of abstraction is done that. A good analogy is operating system today. Because Microsoft operating system has the open API that you can use, doesn't mean that it has to write all the application out there. Yeah. And it still sells. You're right, open is the new free, because we had the free argument forever. Is it free as in beer or is it free as in freedom? Well, now we have to say, well, is it open as in anybody can write anything they want and check the code in, or is it open as in we gave you an API right to this instruction set and you can you can have limited programmability inside of our system but very little visibility yeah. outside of our tools. Yeah. So <coughs> And open by itself is not sufficient from our perspective. Maybe we need to come up with a better word for that. Because oh yeah, if, if you can coin that and uh, not the market as over. on that. I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank okay. You. But, I, but I think uh, you know, I was, I was, I was just going to add too. I mean, uh, you know, OpenFlow, OpenFlow is is a is a protocol, right? OpenFlow isn't SDN, and, and by and large, most people get sucked into this this realm, this conversation of OpenFlow is SDN. It's like no, it's it's a southbound communication protocol. There's other southbound communication protocols that are active today, like SNMP, like Radius, like NetConf. There's a whole bunch of things that can actually program the network from a southbound perspective. So OpenFlow has its time and place and is still fairly immature in terms of production networks. It's, it's part of SDN. It's part of a story. No, you're absolutely right. And there have been, there's been a lot of work done. But I would argue the point that if SNMP was a mature southbound programming protocol, we wouldn't have needed OpenFlow. Yeah, and 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 to me, SNMP, Yang, NetConf, all of that stuff is is doing things the old-fashioned way with a script. You know, it, it's going to take outside the box thinking, blowing the whole thing up to move past the need to say, well, let's just write a batch file to do this. Yeah, and so I know that everybody's going to come up with their own implementation. So you guys are going to have your own implementation. Other vendors who I will not name here will have their separate implementation that will all be kind of sort of compatible with each other, provided, George, you know how to write in Python. Uh, no. um, but <laughs> it, in the end, it would be better if you guys all kind of came together and said, here's our instruction sets that we want to write to. We're going to check this code into a central repository somewhere, and let's all write to the right spec. Let's yeah. not write to a limited subset of the spec and then keep the secret sauce for ourselves. No, no, I mean, <laughs> depends on where you define the secret sauce. So, for example, what we are working on right now is to uh, come up with specific southbound interfaces that allows us to also bridge the gap into our existing infrastructure. So we want to obviously provide an evolutionary platform and not uh, going with a rip and replace uh, approach. And that those changes and that new model is also contribute back to the community. So as part of the open daylight, 
architecture where you have a nice uh, southbound uh, model driven abstraction layer you can plug it in and then suddenly you can work with different southbound interfaces but you still have the same layer on top of that where you can build your applications on top so that's what we're doing and that's obviously the way to go i'll let you go on yeah okay so um yeah so the architecture itself so just one last word on, on that. So we think centralization is important, but you can't really centralize everything specifically in a wireless world. Uh, so I think that's something that the owners will uh, explain a little further. So benefits, we talked about SDN, so let's skip that. Uh, obviously innovation is important, automation and orchestration, we talked about that. Abstraction at the right level. Uh, and uh, obviously a programmable uh, if, data plane. If you yeah. just leave that slide, because I will continue probably from that oh, slide. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So. It's up to you, to be honest. Yeah.